This video is sponsored by LD Player. Hey guys, it's Ander back with another patch note overview featuring the brand new update with the new SSS Gridman slash Dinazanon collaboration event, World Spanning Arclight. Let's go and start. Just like every other event, this new event features some brand new skins for all the new collaboration ships. I've already actually went ahead and bought Akane skin because it is wonderful, and there's also a brand new skin for Bremerton and Independence. So here's Independence's skin, and Bremerton gets another Live 2D skin over here. Pretty cool. Now with this event also comes a limited dorm set called Model City this time. This is probably their most complex dorm set that they've released so far and I really really like it a lot. You can actually do a lot of things here and it's as if your ships are the kaiju and they are destroying the city. Which I could probably believe with that gigantic Akane right here. Just like every other event there are also some brand new gear skins. You can either get them as a rare drop on all of the event stages as you can see right here. You can also alternatively purchase them in the event shop for 2,000 event points each, or in the general shop for 7,000 gold each. This time around the gear skins are pretty decent, in particular I really want a couple of these fireball shells here because they look pretty nice. For the accumulation rewards this time around, at 6,000 points you can go and get yourself the dynamic cannon, which is an auxiliary gear that is pretty okay. It provides you with a bit of firepower as well as an interesting skill. And at 8,000 points, you can also get the Gold Burn, which is actually extremely useful. At plus 10, it gives a very nice 550 HP, and has a useful skill that increases the reload stat of a Vanguard or SSS character by 38, and also can launch a supporting barrage if the flagship is either a carrier or light carrier. And of course, at 10,000 points, you can go and get the battleship Mujina, so make sure to go and get her before the event ends. Moving on to the minigames of this event, first of all we have Gridju vs Kaiju, where in this minigame you control a Mecha Gridman and use color combos to deal damage and perform special moves on the enemy Manju. You can go and charge each color bar by touching two or more of the adjacent blocks of the same color, and once the bar is fully charged right here, you will go and perform a special move that will deal high damage to the Manju. If you go and play this minigame for 7 days, you will receive some gear skin boxes, some event skin boxes, and a painting for your dorm on the seventh day. So yeah, all you gotta do is just like click all the same colored blocks that are next to each other. And then yeah, if you don't really want to go and do this then you can easily just like click the back button and you'll still get rewarded for it. So right here, here's a special move, whoa. Oh, is he not gonna do it? Well anyways, yeah that's it. There is also another very straightforward mini game called Yume's Journey where you can click on the login rewards on Grid Academy to get to. And all you have to do is literally just click this button and then she'll just move a bunch of spaces and depending on the space that you land, you will get rewarded with some random stuff, such as random equipment plates. So that's literally it. Yep. There have also been a couple of small quality of life changes to the priority shipyard. If we go and enter that real quick, you can see that there's now a tiny little icon telling about the fate simulation level of your ship. So if they are at fate simulation 5, you no longer have to click this button here. You can just look at this tiny little icon and see their fate simulation level. Additionally, there's now this very convenient button here that allows you to go and exchange for any extra PR blueprints. Onto the world spanning arc light event shop guide for this event shop if you aren't planning on farming T4 or the SP stage and also haven't gotten her from the gacha yet, be sure to go and pick up at least one copy of Chisei Asakagawa before the event ends. She's a pretty solid carrier overall and since this is a collaboration, these ships will never return, so it's a pretty good idea to go and get at least one copy of her somehow. For all the other event exclusive auxiliary gears right here, Let's go and quickly go over to Rika, who is currently equipping all of them. I haven't tested these skills that they provide for Rika yet, so we'll only be looking at the raw stats that they provide for now. First of all, the Battle Tracto Max is extremely useful and is definitely the best of the four offered in the event shop. It provides a decent amount of firepower and evasion to any ship equipping it. This would be especially good on someone like Kitakaze, who is a main gun focused destroyer and definitely greatly benefits from more firepower. 
The Gridman Caliber over here provides a decent amount of evasion. The Buster Boar provides a nice chunk of torpedo stat. And finally, the Sky Vitter provides a bit of anti-air. Another thing that I would highly prioritize getting in the event shop are the Cognitive Arrays, as currently everyone needs more of them to go in Limit Break to pass level 120, and they come in a very limited quantity. For the rest of the items, it's a pretty normal and usual recommendation. Be sure to pick up the normal and rainbow PR blueprints, as they save a ton of time for the PR grind. The purple genera parts are always wonderful, as you can never have too many of them. And you can always buy more oil and gold if you're running low on them. Especially the oil now is very good, because with the new oil cap feature, it's actually a net positive in event points if you were to buy the oil from the event shop, and then using said oil, farm the event stage with it. And finally, of course, the gold cap boxes are also pretty good. Now on to how to farm world spending arc light. Since this event is a collaboration, the event stages are pretty easy and straightforward. There are only four main stages, as well as the additional SP stage right here, and the EX stages. First off, I would recommend finishing the first four main stages as soon as possible to go and unlock the SP stage, where you can go and do this stage once per day for a very nice 800 event points, as well as the chance to get Chisei Asukagawa. After this, you can go and farm T4 if you want the most event points in the most efficient way, as well as again, the chance to get Chisei Asukagawa, and special mention to T3 for anyone that wants Gneisenau and Deutschland, as they have a chance to go and drop from the stage if anyone doesn't have them yet. For the first ship on today's ship reviews, we have Akane Shinjo, a new super rare battleship. For various reasons, she's my favorite character in this collab. I loved her in the anime and I've already bought her skin. Stat-wise, she has average HP, but pretty good firepower and anti-air. And onto her skills, her first skill simply grants her a 70% chance to fire a special barrage when she fires her main guns. In addition, Akane's second skill launches a special airstrike every 20 seconds, and finally, her third skill increases her own firepower by 8%. In addition, when Akane's HP falls below 30% as a result of damage taken, she increases her own firepower by 10%, and also heals herself 4 times for 2% of her own max HP per tick for a total of 8% of her max HP. Overall, I'm not expecting much from these collaboration ships, but Akane is definitely a pretty solid ship. I'll definitely be leveling her up. Next up, we have our event shop slash map drop reward, Chisei Asakagawa, a new super rare carrier. For her stats, she has pretty high HP and pretty average everything else. And for her skills, Chisei's first skill grants her a preloaded airstrike, which is always very good. In addition, she also gets a special additional airstrike from her second airstrike and onwards, which is also pretty nice. For Chisei's second skill, in each battle, when she launches her first and third airstrike, she also launches a special gold burn airstrike. In addition, she also spawns a shield around your vanguard that lasts up to 10 seconds, that reduces your vanguard's damage taken by 8%, and can block up to 15 shots. Overall, Chisei is pretty similar to Aquila in both stats and skills. If you didn't get Aquila yet, Chisei could easily be a viable alternative, although she doesn't have that heal like Aquila does. Onto the most interesting ship in the event, we have Rika Takarada, a new super rare light cruiser that has access to 5 auxiliary slots. Yup, you heard me right. She has the potential to become the ultimate torpedo meme queen with 5 rainbow oxygen torpedoes. Is this useful information? Probably not, but you do have the option if your heart desires. Anyways, for Rika's stats, she has the 4th highest HP out of all light cruisers, she also has above average firepower, anti-air reload, and ASW stat, and the 4th highest torpedo stat out of all light cruisers as well. Overall, her stats are surprisingly good. Onto her skills, Rika's red skill grants her a 15% firepower boost for the first 90 seconds of each battle, and she also fires a special grid beam every 20 seconds, and this grid beam is enhanced if she has the Battle Tracto Max or the Buster Boar equipped, or if she is sortied with either Hass or Namiko. Rika's yellow skill also increases her ant here by 15% for the first 90 seconds of battle, and also reduces her cannon damage taken by 8% for the first 90 seconds of battle. 5 seconds into battle and every 30 seconds after that, Rika also fires a special barrage if she and this barrage can once again be enhanced if she has the Gridman Caliber or the Sky Vitter equipped, or if she is sorted with Namiko or Hass once again. 
Finally, for Rika's blue skill, 40 seconds into battle, she will fire a special healing grid fixer beam that will heal the entire fleet 3 times for 1% of their max HP per tick. In addition, once per battle, when Rika falls below 50% HP, she heals the fleet, which I'm guessing means that she activates the skill once again. Overall, it's a little bit too soon to go and judge how good Rika will be because she has some really really weird gears, but just from her base stats alone, she's looking quite good. Once she gets, once I go and get her all of her stats and skills maxed out, I'll go and definitely let you guys know how she is. Next up for the last super rare of this collaboration, we have a new heavy cruiser, Yume Minami. For Yume's stats, she has extremely similar stats to Portland Retrofit in every category, except she has much better reload and accuracy than Portland Retrofit. Yume is also tied for the highest reload stat out of all heavy cruisers with Exeter Retrofit. Now for Yume's skills, Yume's first skill fires a special Blazing Inferno Rex Roar Barrage every 20 times that her secondary guns fire, so ideally you would want a fast firing gun in the slot. For Yume's second skill, Something Beam, she grants herself a 15% evasion stat boost for the first 90 seconds of battle, which is actually pretty excellent for a heavy cruiser due to their generally low evasion stat, and she fires a special barrage every 18 seconds that inflicts armor break on any enemy's hit. Finally, for Yume's third skill, she grants herself a third special barrage that activates every 10 times that she fires her main guns. Overall, I would say that Yume is going to be a pretty good ship. You could think of her as a Portland retrofit, except she has much higher reload and accuracy, and also has three barrages that will constantly be activating. On to the elite rarity ships of the event, we first have Haas. I have no idea why, but it took me an extra 100 cubes just to go and get her after I got everyone else. Anyways, Haas is a light cruiser with average elite rarity stats, and like a model citizen, she is following current COVID-19 protocols by wearing a mask. Very cool. For her skills, Haas's blue skill fires a special barrage for every 10 times that she fires her main guns, and she also deploys a smoke screen that lasts for 5 seconds that puts out any ships on fire that enter it. For Haas's red skill, 5 seconds into the battle and with a 70% chance every 20 seconds after, Haas fires a special laser barrage and increases her anti-air by 8%, which can stack up to 2 times per battle. On to our 10,000 point accumulation reward, we have Mujina, an elite rarity battleship. She has average elite rarity stats with above average evasion, and with her cool sounding skills being her first skill, Instance Domination Wings, she takes control of Siren aircraft every 20 seconds and makes them attack enemies. Honestly, I have no idea how this skill is actually going to play out, but it sounds very cool at the very least. Her second skill, Instance Domination Flames, activates whenever Mujino fires her main guns, where she seizes control of Siren weaponry and makes them attack enemies. Once again, no idea if this is just flavor text for a special barrage that activates every time she fires her main guns, but this is interesting nonetheless. Last of all, we have Subaru, I mean Namiko, an elite rarity heavy cruiser. For her stats, there is literally nothing noteworthy, except she actually has the lowest evasion stat out of all heavy cruisers, at a depressing 40 at level 125. For her skills, her blue skill activates every 20 seconds and fires a special slashing attack. She also spawns a shield that blocks up to 10 shots and lasts up to 8 seconds, and her red skill enhances her secondary guns, and every 15 seconds there is a 70% chance to fire a special barrage. That's all. With those trip reviews finished, that will bring an end to this Azerlane SSS Gridman slash Dinazanon collaboration event guide. As always, if you found this information helpful, consider dropping a like and subscribing. Don't forget to press the notification bell for my future uploads as well. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions that need to be answered, and I'll try my best to reply. If you're interested, you can always join my Discord server if you need any advice or just want a place to relax. That'll be all for this video, so I'll catch you guys next time. Bye!